out. Everybody. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Lights Out Podcast. As always, I'm your host, Josh. I'm joined in the studio by my producer, Joel. And today, we are diving into the mystery, the legend, the creepy, black-eyed children. Now, this is one of those topics that truly freaks me out because if this is at all real then we should all be very very worried this is also kind of a different type of episode because we haven't really covered an urban legend on the show i don't believe and i'm really interested to see if these types of topics are interesting to you guys and if so what other topics would you like to see also would you be interested in diving into some cryptids Some of them are definitely scary, but some of them are not so scary. So I'm interested to see if any of that interests you as well. But before we get into the Black Eyed Children in today's episode, I want to thank our sponsor for today, Raycon. And also, if you haven't subscribed to Lights Out yet, I would love if you would. If you watch the show on YouTube, if you're subscribed on YouTube, that's awesome. But if you'd also go to iTunes and subscribe and maybe even give us a follow on Spotify, even if you don't necessarily listen to the show on iTunes or Spotify, it still helps us out a lot. But I can't believe that we are nearing almost 20 episodes on the show already. It's been just an absolutely fun and terrifying ride, but I've enjoyed every single episode so far. And I know, Joel, you have as well. Yeah, dude, it's been an absolute blast doing this with you. And thanks to everybody who's been watching and listening and, you know, supporting us definitely means a lot. Yeah, seriously, guys. I mean, the feedback we've gotten is just like blown us away. Like every day we go and check to see what you guys are saying on YouTube or, you know, in iTunes reviews. And, you know, we take all of your guys' feedback very seriously because we're here to try to put on the best possible show that we can. And we're constantly trying to figure out ways to up our production level to make the environment better, you know, music and media, and just really try to give you a truly dark escape for an hour or however long the episode lasts, because that's, I mean, that's ultimately what we're doing this for, is this provides us an escape from reality, from all the craziness and shit in the world. We get to, you know, just take an hour and completely lose ourselves in a terrifying story or event or person. So with all that being said, I just want to say thank you to everybody out there who has subscribed to the show, who supported us, has been listening, watching. We really do appreciate you guys. And we're looking forward to making so much more content for you guys. And the topics that we got lined up is just going to get scarier and scarier and crazier as time goes on. But without further ado, let's dive in to the horrifying mystery of the black eyed children. So let's begin by talking about what the black eyed children are and where did they come from? Because I know not everybody out there has even heard of the black eyed children before, but you know, as soon as you start learning about them, you quickly realize that if this phenomenon is real, then we should definitely be scared. The main reason that we even know about black eyed children is from people who have had firsthand encounters with them and have gone on to then, you know, talk to both ghost hunters, paranormal investigators, researchers, and journalists, and have told their stories about encountering these children that have these dark black eyes. It's almost like these children have black holes for eyes. It's just pure, empty blackness, and there's no signs of life in them at all. According to people who have seen black-eyed children or have had encounters with them, It seems like the common denominator is that oftentimes these children look to be between the ages of 8 and 12 years old. They oftentimes have ashy, pasty white skin, and their skin has an odd, unnatural texture to it, almost like it's not real. Not only that, these children oftentimes wear clothes that are outdated by at least a few decades. So when people see them, they're like very confused that These children look like they just time traveled or something from some other century because oftentimes they're wearing clothes from, you know, like the 50s if it was right now or the 40s or even later than that. I mean, back into the 1800s. So it's very, very weird to a person who comes across a black eyed child because they're like, this makes absolutely no sense. Why is this child dressed like this? But probably one of the most creepy things about the black eyed children is that they oftentimes speak in this cold, monotone voice. And when you ask them things, they make these absolutely bizarre requests that sometimes don't even make sense. 
and aren't actual natural phrases or responses to the questions that are being asked. Oftentimes, black-eyed children approach people on the side of the road randomly or in parking lots, and oftentimes they ask to get into the car. It seems like a lot of times they want to either come into your house or they want to come into your car with you. So much so that they'll even come right up to people's front doors and they'll knock on your front door. But what's so creepy about this is that it's not like a, you know, if a kid were to come up to your front door, chances are the way that they would knock would be fast knocking. It would be like, but instead it's a slow, very almost methodical knock. Like it's like what, what kind of child knocks like that? No child I can think of, obviously. And, you know, one thing I heard about that knocking too is they'll continue knocking and knocking like they never stop. They just do it and do it until, you know, hoping somebody answers the door. So think about this for a second. It's late at night. You're home alone. It's like 2.30 in the morning. You're either heading to bed or you're already in bed. All of a sudden you are hearing this slow, steady knock on your front door. Now, what is the first thing you're going to do? You're probably going to want to know who's at your front door and hopefully you got the ring doorbell because, yeah. or a video doorbell so you can take hop. a quick look. Yeah. You don't have to actually go to the door to see and you can look through your phone, but they will keep knocking at your door. They don't just leave. You know, they don't stop knocking like you said, Joel. They continue until somebody actually comes and answers the door. So it's not like, oh, if one of them comes to my door, I just won't answer. Well, they're going to stay there. <laughs> until you do answer. What else is creepy is there's been reports that these children don't just knock on the front door. They've even been seen like on the back porch, like on the deck or, you know, at the slider door, even just knocking. I can't imagine how terrifying that would be to like hear that knock on your slider door and you look and you see like one or two of these children just like peeking in. Yeah. Cause I mean, just, just the fact that it's children knocking at your back door for one, usually at night is strange enough in itself. But what's most commonly reported is that when they go to the door to answer it, or when they do open the door, the children are oftentimes looking down. They're completely hiding their faces from view. So obviously your first reaction is going to be to ask these children, what are they doing here? And when you do, this is when they ask you, can I come in? In one particular story I heard, the child actually said in response to, can I, like, can I help you or are you okay, was time to eat. Or it was like, yeah, it was something along the lines of eating time. Like they said something like that to the person. And it's just not a natural response to say, what are you doing? And you're just like, time to eat. So it's little things like that that are often reported. Now, probably the creepiest thing about them is that if you do refuse to allow them entry into either your car or your home, they will then raise up their head, revealing these black holes for eyes, and they just stare right through you. But chances are, if a black-eyed child shows up to your door, they are probably not alone. Oftentimes, they do show up in groups of two or three, and frequent sightings are of either a boy and a girl around the age of 10 is what is most commonly reported. Now, black-eyed children have been seen all over the world, across Europe, Australia, and South Africa even. There are hot spots of sightings in the United States, though. People in Texas and Midwestern states are more likely to encounter black-eyed children. There have been clusters of cases from coast to coast, including in California and Florida. They usually appear on dark, quiet nights, often in rural areas, and through the years, sightings in parking lots, alleyways, and even schools have increased. So the actual number of sightings of these black-eyed children has increased over the years. And people who encounter the black-eyed children oftentimes report an immediate sense of dread or uneasiness and obviously fear when they encounter one. And as soon as the child starts talking, that feeling of dread increases dramatically. And the longer that that particular person continues to interact with a black-eyed child, the more frightened that person becomes. Then, when the children reveal their black eyes, it's at this point that you are completely overcome by fear. 
And obviously, as soon as you see those eyes, you're getting the fuck out of there. You're shutting the door and you're trying to get away from them as fast as possible. But probably the most interesting thing about this phenomenon is that if you do turn away from a black eyed child, even for a few seconds, they vanish into thin air like they just disappear. And those who come in contact with black eyed children end up very sick sometimes. And in some cases, family members of that individual also get very ill. And it's been reported that the more contact a person has with a black eyed child, the more likely it is that they will get sick. Touching them or looking directly into their eyes is especially dangerous. And under no circumstances should a person ever give black eyed children what they want, which is almost always access to your car or your home. One of the first things that I looked at when looking into this subject is where did this all begin? And it seems like this mystery of the black eyed children really became popular in the 1980s and 1990s. However, there is evidence that suggests that sightings of black eyed children date back much farther into history. Sightings of children with unusually pale mask like skin and jet black eyes can be traced back in America to as early as the 1940s and 1950s. One individual who has done quite a bit of research on black eyed children is paranormal investigator David Weatherly. And he's actually interviewed dozens of people who have had firsthand experiences with black eyed children. And he actually wrote a book about it. It's called the black eyed children. When David started his research into the paranormal just in general, but especially with black eyed children, he said he was definitely a skeptic, but what he found after talking to these people who had firsthand experiences with black eyed children was that there was so many similarities in their accounts as well as similarities in the reactions, the emotional reactions that people would have when they encountered a black eyed child. To start things off, to get you in the mood, I want to play a clip of David explaining perhaps one of the creepiest black eyed children stories he has ever heard. What happened was this gentleman contacted me, military man. He has family all over Texas. He was uh, visiting family in uh, East Texas decided he wanted to see some of his relatives in West Texas. And uh, this young man, he likes to drive at night, watch the stars and just kind of buzz across those lonely Texas road. As he's done many times, he takes off, got his thermos full of coffee and uh, it's, it's a black night, he's driving along. These back roads in Texas, a lot of times you can I think so, kid. He gets down the road a little bit. His training starts to kick in. I'm training military. Why am I running from a kid? Mm -hmm. Then he starts thinking logically. Maybe this is a kid that really needed help. Hits a U-turn. Goes back to the spot. Finds the exact spot. Searches with a flashlight, searches everywhere. No sign of this kid anywhere. He's looking all around in the distance for any kind of a a light from a house, Mm. an outside light, something. There's nothing. So what do you make of that? I mean, he literally pulled over to just go to the bathroom real quick, turns around. 
there's a black eyed child standing right next to his driver's side door asking him to let him into his vehicle so that they can go for a ride. And this is so common when looking at these black eyed children encounters is that they want to get in your vehicle and you definitely do not want to let them do that. And definitely demanding like that child didn't answer any of his questions and just, you know, playing broken record. Like, yeah, just get in the truck, man. And (laughs) no other (laughs) options. Right, dude. And, you know, once he saw his eyes, I just saw that fear and, you know, it totally makes sense. I'd be in the same situation. So this is just one of the many stories that David has written about in his book. And just one of the many stories he's heard from countless people who have encountered black eyed children over the years. So he got into this skeptical, but the more he investigated it, the more he realized that black eyed children, this phenomenon goes back way farther in history than he even knew at the beginning. In fact, many people believe that black eyed children goes as far back as to ancient times. There's actually a human shaped statue made of sandstone called Urfa man, which caught David's interest. Now the statue was found in modern day Turkey in Gobleki Tepe. If you've ever heard of this, this is an absolutely astounding ancient site that predates every civilization. I think it's like 13,000 years old. And there is this statue that looks like some sort of human entity. And it's got these black, just pure black eyes made out of obsidian, black obsidian. And so some people speculate that perhaps Urfa man, as they call the statue, could in fact be an ancient representation of black eyed children. This is very interesting because this, if this is true, then that would obviously signify that black eyed children have been around since the beginning of time. And they actually recorded it by making the statue because it was such a big deal back almost 13,000 years ago. And it's also interesting because another big symbol in this area of the world is the evil eye, which many people believe that an evil eye could curse somebody if they made eye contact with it and negative energy could be transferred through somebody through this eye. So throughout history, cultures have warned of these curses and used a variety of objects and symbols to protect against it. In fact, many people actually wear the symbol of the evil eye in order to ward off evil energy and evil spirits. But perhaps this is one of the reasons why many people believe that black eyed children have the evil eye. And that's why making eye contact with them can be so dangerous is that if you do, they could essentially, I I presume either curse you or they could actually maybe even possess you. So again, we don't know for sure if Urfa man or the statue is a black eyed child at all. It could be something completely different. But what we do know is that black eyed children encounters have happened over the decades and they've continued to increase in recent years. And the reason for more cases could be because there's more black eyed children wandering around, or it could be because more people are actually speaking out and they're actually tracking these sightings now. So because there isn't that much information on what black eyed children are, there's no written history of it. We don't even know what they are. And we'll obviously talk about what some of the theories are about what black eyed children could be. We're going to be focusing on real life encounters that people have had a number of different stories of people who have come face to face with black eyed children. But before we get into those, I'd like to thank our sponsor for today, Raycon. So whether you're working from home or you're working at the office, or maybe you're pumping iron at the gym, You want what you're listening to to be actually what you're listening to. You want to hear what everybody else is playing or the crappy music the gym's got going on. So that's why you need to get yourself a great pair of wireless earbuds. But before you drop hundreds of dollars on a pair, check out wireless earbuds from Raycon. You already know that Raycon earbuds start at about half the price of any other premium wireless earbuds on the market and that they sound just as amazing as other top audio brands you know. Their newest model, the Everyday E25 earbuds, are their best ones yet. With six hours of playtime, seamless Bluetooth pairing, more bass, and a more compact design that gives you a nice noise-isolating fit. Raycon's wireless earbuds are so comfortable and perfect for conference calls, for the gym, or for binging your favorite podcasts. 
lights out. But now's the time to get the latest and greatest from Raycon. Get 15% off your order at buyraycon.com slash lights out. That's buyraycon.com slash lights out for 15% off Raycon wireless earbuds. Buyraycon.com slash lights out. All right, so let's talk about some real life encounters with the black eyed children. Now, when considering the number of emotionally charged, disturbing eyewitness accounts of black eyed children encounters, even hardened skeptics have a tough time arguing against their existence. One witness from the early 1950s was a young man who was walking down a dirt road that led to his house where he lived there with his parents. And as he walked along, he saw a young boy about eight to 10 years old leaning against a fence post. This was a small rural community and he knew all the neighbors and people who lived in his town, but he didn't recognize this young boy. So he decided to walk up to this boy he didn't know and started asking him where he was from and if he needed help. But this boy just stood there perfectly still with his head down. And he said flatly, I want to go to your house. Take me to your house. And once he said this, this young man felt instant chills run up and down his spine. And he started to respond when the boy looked up at him with solid black eyes and when this young man looked into those eyes his blood went cold and he thought to himself how fast can i run home then as if reading his thoughts the black eyed child said don't you run away (laughs) and as soon as he said that this young man took off down the road running as fast as he possibly could And as he ran, he heard the unmistakable scream of what he thinks was a bobcat coming from the boy. Once this young man got home, he burst into his house, screaming to his parents about what he had just seen. They immediately believed that he had met the devil and brought their son to a preacher. Now it's believed that demons can take on any shape, including that of a human but there will always be one characteristic that's not quite right. And in this case, perhaps the demon looked exactly like a normal 10 year old boy, except for black eyes. After hearing this story, you might be thinking, oh, it's probably just some, you know, young kid that probably just saw something that he didn't really see, or he made it up entirely. But what's very interesting about black eyed children is that there have even been sightings by those in authority, like members of the military, police officers, and many others. One particular witness of a black eyed child was a police officer who had been called out for a domestic disturbance. And as he was sitting in his patrol car, finishing up his report from the call he had just finished, he saw what looked like two young kids up on a deck outside a house. So with it being as late as it was, he decided to go see what these young children were doing because it was far too late for them to be outside especially standing outside of somebody's house so he went over to check on them and immediately he felt very uneasy because they were acting very strangely and then they raised their heads and he saw their black eyes and it was dark out so he thought maybe these kids might just have been victims of abuse or maybe they were just high on drugs but then one of them said to him they won't let us in after the officer heard this He decided he was going to knock on the back door in order to try and talk to whoever was inside to see about what these kids were doing. So at this point in time, he actually turned his back to the kids when he knocked on the door. The officer is actually standing in front of the door, which also would have blocked the exit down the stairs off of the deck. And when he turned around, the kids were both gone. So in order to get off of the deck, they would have had to jump off of it without making a sound in order to get away, but he never witnessed anything like that happen. When the elderly woman finally answered the door, she said that she had no children and didn't even know of any neighborhood kids that matched the description the officer gave. So obviously this really weirded out the police officer, so he decided to canvas the area and the neighborhood to try and find these kids, but he never found any trace of them. So what happens if these black-eyed children actually do get inside of your house or your car. In rare cases, it has happened. In one disturbing account, a young mother was driving home with her 10-year-old son 
and her son was in the back seat when she decided to stop at a convenience store and go inside to pick up a few things she needed. They lived in a rural area where everyone knew each other and leaving a child alone in the car for a few minutes wasn't uncommon. And this was something she did all the time. But when the mother returned to the vehicle, she got into the driver's seat, put the bag in the back seat without turning around like normal. But then when she glanced up into the rear view mirror, she let out a blood curdling scream. Sitting next to her son was another little boy with a calm expression and completely black eyes. Can you fucking imagine that? That's like always my fear, right? Is like getting into your vehicle and then you look up, you know, to maybe like see if anybody's behind you before you back out. And then you see some fucking creepy ass eye staring back at you, whether it be a black eyed child or, you know, some type of demonic entity or ghost or something that that's definitely like a creepy thought I have more often than not probably. So after she sees this black eyed child sitting in the back seat, she jumps out of the car, somehow manages to grab her son as well and runs into the store in a panic. When she came inside, the clerk said that this woman was completely hysterical and couldn't even talk or explain what she had seen. All she could say was in the back of my car. So the clerk ran outside, looked at her car with the doors open and there was no one else around. The woman ended up calling her husband even, and he raced to the store, but she still couldn't tell him what had happened. So he drove her car home and let her and her son take his car. The woman then asked her son about the other little boy, and he said that the boy had asked if he could come into the car. And he had thought, hey, maybe we can go back to the house and play. So he gave permission for the boy to get in. Now what's fucking crazy about this story is that on the way home, the man, the father of this boy was in a car accident. He had completely blacked out and suffered a mild concussion with a few scrapes and bruises. But the moment before the wreck, he remembered being overwhelmed by a terrible odor. And shortly after this accident happened and this whole ordeal with the black eyed child went down, the couple's son got very sick and his parents ended up taking him to the hospital. But every time he was diagnosed with something like appendicitis and then the measles or the flu and what was weird is that his symptoms would constantly change eventually his parents brought him home and they called their friends and started a prayer circle around him and they continued this routine until he recovered in this particular story it's very interesting that a prayer circle seemed to somehow have some sort of effect on whatever this black-eyed child did to them it's almost like This black-eyed child was an omen or something, and the only way to rid themselves of it was to pray. What's also interesting about black-eyed children is that they don't seem to recognize everyday objects. In one case, a woman was at home working on a project. She then heard a consistent knocking on the front door. She ignored it and continued working, but it continued. She became so frustrated that she threw down what she had been working on to go answer the door. And when she threw it open, she said, why don't you use the doorbell and pointed to it? The kids had gathered on her front porch, looked at her blankly with their black eyes. They looked at the doorbell and then back at her multiple times. It was as if they had never seen one before and had no idea how to use it. In 1996, a Texas reporter named Brian Bethel published a story about encountering black eyed children in Abilene, Texas. Brian Pryor had no experience with the paranormal. And as a journalist, he considered himself objective and rational. But one night, he was sitting in his car when he heard a sharp knock. He then looked out the window to see two boys. And he said they could have been teenagers. But they were acting very strange. They moved unnaturally and their skin was ghostly pale. And in the darkness, he could see that their eye sockets were completely black. The teens approached his car and asked to be let in. Terrified... Brian immediately called his friend Chad Beavers, who had a psychology background thinking he was having some sort of psychotic episode. Chad at the time had some friends over and was trying to calm his friend down. And he said, what do you mean, weird freaky kids? One of Chad's friends interrupted and said, do they have black eyes? Brian hadn't mentioned this detail yet, was shocked that someone knew without even knowing what he had seen firsthand. The friend explained that she had a dream about children with black eyes She said that if Brian had let them into his car, he'd be dead by now. 
Another prominent story took place in a small town in Vermont. An elderly couple lived in a rural area that was quiet and peaceful. One night, they heard three loud knocks on their front door, and it was two young children and a boy and a girl. One of them said, Parents will be here soon. May we come in? They were polite, and they spoke softly, but they kept their heads down. So the couple said, Sure, why not? Come on inside. The two children then sat on the couch in the living room, and while the woman went to make them hot cocoa to warm up, the man tried to get more information about where they had come from. He tried asking them questions about where their parents were and where they came from, but the children didn't answer. And when the woman came back into the room, she knows her cat was acting very weird. The cat usually ignored visitors, but was noticeably agitated and seemed to be afraid of the children. One of them asked, may we please use the restroom? The woman turned around to answer and saw their eyes for the first time. They were ink black. She suddenly felt nervous, but composed herself and showed the kids to the bathroom. And when she returned, after taking the children to the bathroom, her husband held his hand to his face, his palm dripping with blood. When he had first seen the children's black eyes, his nose started bleeding like a faucet. And after this, the power went out all of a sudden. And the woman went to find the children and lead them back to the living room. But when she went to the bathroom, they were actually standing at the end of the hall muttering under their breaths, our parents are here. They then ran out of the house and didn't close the door behind them. And then she noticed that two tall, thin men met them at the end of the driveway. The woman tried to wave at them, but they ignored her. And the four of them got in a car and drove away. Soon after, the power came back on. Over the next week, the couple experienced one strange thing after another. Three of their four cats went mysteriously missing and they found the fourth one lying dead in a pool of blood. The cat had been perfectly healthy before, so what happened? Also, her husband kept getting frequent nosebleeds and ended up being eventually diagnosed with skin cancer. Wow. This definitely seems like, it's like these children bring the plague with them if you invite them into your home. Nothing but misfortune happens if you allow them to bring that upon you it seems like but that's an especially horrifying story and who are these two men that these children ran out to meet right because from other stories these children would just vanish you know like they're an apparition but in this case it's completely different like that family saw them you know get in the car which is just so crazy but like you said it's like they brought a i don't know if supernatural is the word for it but this invisible presence with them that just continued to haunt their place afterwards yeah they like stopped by and left a bunch of paranormal activity behind yeah. like just dumped it in there and left yeah the, the whole idea that they got into a car with two men is very weird and when we talk about theories i'll explain more about what i think about that but in 2014 a british newspaper published a series of stories about multiple encounters with the black-eyed children dating back to the 1980s and in these encounters people believe they were being haunted by ghosts Paranormal investigator Lee Brickley was looking into sightings on Canuck Chase in Staffordshire, England. He told the newspaper he had heard from multiple people who saw a ghost-like little girl who had coal black pits for eye sockets. Lee Brickley believed that these sightings were the reappearance of the same ghostly figure that had been spotted in the area 30 years prior. A man who saw the girl with his wife said on Saturday, September 13th, my wife and I were walking through Canuck Chase near Style Cop with our dog. Once we had entered the woodland and the road was no longer visible, we started to hear the giggling noise of a little girl. And to our amazement, a child no taller than one meter in height appeared as if out of nowhere further up the path in front of us. We stopped dead in her tracks after noticing her eyes had no color. Her head was tilted to the side in much the same way it would appear if she had been hung. She stared at us for around five minutes before running away into a densely grouped area of trees. My wife wanted to follow her, but I was saying, hell to the no, no, no. <laughs> Another witness was a woman with her daughter. She said, around two months ago, my daughter and I were walking through Birch's Valley, an area well known for its ghostly sightings. When we heard the screams of a young child, I couldn't tell if it was a boy or a girl but they definitely seemed in distress and sounded very close to us. So we instantly started running towards the noise. We couldn't find the child anywhere. And so we stopped to catch our breath. 
and that's when I turned around and saw a girl standing beside me, no more than 10 years old, with her hands over her eyes like she was waiting for a birthday cake. I asked if she was okay and if she had been the one screaming. She then put her arms down by her side and opened her eyes, which is when I saw they were completely black. No iris, no white, nothing. I jumped back and grabbed my daughter, and when I looked again, the child was gone. It was strange, really. I knew something was going to happen, even before it did. I just had this weird feeling. The newspaper followed Lee Brickley as he investigated one evening. Every night, Lee went to the same spot looking for the unkempt, anemic infant. The owners of a local pub called the Four Crosses were trying to sell it, but they couldn't find a buyer because it was a well-known spot for the black-eyed children. People started calling the newspaper, claiming to have seen the black-eyed children across Europe. The newspaper suggested that the black-eyed children could be hallucinations. The theory was that a secret military operation could have resulted in an accidental chemical leak, which was causing hallucinations. Which I don't necessarily agree with because if there was like a chemical leak, I feel like anybody who encountered that area of contamination would possibly experience that same hallucination of a black-eyed child. But with these you know, stories and reports, it's been random people at random times in different areas. So just that whole claim doesn't make much sense to me. Plus, everybody's brain is different too. So everybody's going to probably react to a certain type of chemical differently. I mean, I've never heard of a hallucinogenic drug that produces the same type of, of image necessarily. You know, maybe, maybe that's the case with some things, or maybe this was some sort of, you know, top secret military operation where they did create some type of hallucinogenic drug that makes you trip black eyed children. <laughs> I mean, that's fucking scary to think about, but I don't, I don't know. I, I feel like in most cases it would probably be, you know, everybody would be tripping on something different. You know, it wouldn't be like there's the infant, there's the girl, like everybody's clearly seeing something different, but maybe there is an hallucinogenic drug that is going to create these sort of, you know, ghostly sightings for everybody. But I, I don't know. It, this just seems like a, a, an excuse to me to sort of decredit, you know, discredit somebody's work. And, and that's exactly what they did is the newspaper actually attributed this theory that it was just a secret military operation that accidentally spilled some chemicals for all of these black eyed children sightings that he was investigating because over two years, Lee Brickley actually interviewed nine credible witnesses. Lee's aunt had also encountered the black eyed children with friends back in 1982 when she was just 18 years old. Lee wrote about his aunt's experience actually. And he said she stumbled upon a dirt track and caught sight of the six to eight year old girl running in the opposite direction, shouting help mommy help. By now it was getting dark and the little girl had reached an area of very densely planted thick and bushy trees. She turned around to face my auntie, looked her dead in the eyes, and then ran off into the dark, compact woodland. At this point, probably very wisely, the decision was made to give up. Lee's aunt did notify the police and a search party was formed, but no one ever saw her again. Lee believed that the black-eyed children were demons taking the form of human children trying to lead people toward danger. When talking about his aunt's experience, he said, in my mind, it seems likely that even if my auntie had continued to chase a little girl, she would have never caught her because it wasn't a child at all, but an evil force planning to do away with my own family member. One prominent theory for this little girl and all black eyed children is that they are ghosts of murdered children. In the 1960s, Raymond Leslie Morris, also called the monster of Canuck Chase, murdered at least three young girls. Five-year-old Diana Joy Tift and six-year-old Margaret Reynolds were found dead in a ditch on January 12, 1966. A year later, on August 22, 1967, seven-year-old Christine Darby was found dead just a mile away from where the other girls had been. Years earlier, on December 1, 1964, nine-year-old Julia Taylor was abducted, raped, and strangled before being left on the road. She was found before she died. But it's believed that all these girls had been attacked by the same perpetrator. It's possible that Raymond Morris murdered many more. Whenever someone encounters a black-eyed child, they are immediately filled with dread. Exactly how a person would feel when in the presence of a ghost of a murdered child, most likely. A similar theory is that the black-eyed children are the ghosts of children from the Cornovi tribes, who were sacrificed to the Celtic gods centuries ago. No matter where they come from or what they want, countless stories of encounters with the black-eyed children exist. In the spring of 2008, 
a 12 year old boy was waiting in the car while his mom was getting a haircut. He saw another boy walking nearby and got his attention thinking it was one of his friends. The boy then came up to the car window and stared inside and his eyes were completely black. He seemed to be waiting until the boy in the car was scared out of his mind before moving or speaking. Then the black eyed boy said, you must let me in. The boy in the car then locked the doors and hid beneath the seats. The black eyed boy continued staring at him for another five minutes and then he walked into the hair salon and found the boy's mother. He demanded her car key so that he could get into the car. The woman said hell no and then went back out to check on her son. That's where she found him hiding in the back seat scared to death. A few years later in early 2010, a young man walked a woman to her car in downtown Seattle. They didn't know each other but it was late so she had asked him to walk with her as protection. He thought she was attractive, but he also noticed that she seemed very scared. He asked her what was wrong, and she mentioned creepy-looking kids who had freaked her out. The man looked around for these kids, and after they walked a few blocks, the woman froze. That's them, she whispered. The two kids were standing still on the sidewalk, staring in their direction. The man kept walking and planned to scold the kids for scaring the woman, but these kids kept staring right at them, and they didn't move, and they didn't seem scared or intimidated at all. This guy was pretty big, and he usually found it easy to physically intimidate people, but these kids kept direct eye contact. He decided not to confront them, and he made sure that the woman got back to her car safely and told her how to get to the nearest police station if she wanted to report what the kids had done that had scared her so badly. Another story with black-eyed children involved a couple who was sound asleep with their two-year-old daughter in bed with them. The woman woke up when her new puppy started barking. She planned to open the door to show the puppy that the yard was empty, but the dog started growling and snarling in a way that the woman had never heard before. When she actually went to touch the deadbolt, the dog suddenly whimpered and then slumped to the floor. The woman was suddenly panicked. Her heart was racing and she looked through the peephole to see what was outside. And that's when she saw two girls. One was an older teenager, probably around 16 years old. Her head was tilted awkwardly and her eyes were hidden behind her bangs and she was holding a child's hand, a young girl maybe three or four years old. The young girl wore the same kind of dress that the woman's daughter wore, and she clutched an identical stuffed animal to the one her daughter actually had. The woman became so overwhelmed by fear, she couldn't move a muscle, and her dogs had become dead quiet. But then the teenage girl spoke and said, we have to use your phone. The woman had no idea how the girl knew she was even standing behind the door. At this point, the teen was now looking straight towards her, and the woman noticed that her eyes were no longer hidden. They were totally black. And that's when the teenage girl said, our mother is worried. The woman took a step back from the door, and then the teen said, just let us in to use your phone. The woman didn't answer. She kept backing away from the door slowly. And now this black-eyed child was getting very angry, and she said, we're not going to hurt you. If we wanted to do that, we would have broken in. I'll ask again, may we come in and use your phone? The woman wanted to turn around and run, but she felt like her subconscious mind was pulling her back toward the door. There was an invisible force beckoning her to let the girl in. She fought hard against it and went back to her bedroom. She then covered her window and heard the teenage black eyed child calling to her at least one more time. Then she said, She laid awake all night. The next morning, the woman told her husband what had happened. He insisted it must have been a dream. But after this, she was afraid at night and of hearing a knock on the door. And a heavy feeling of dread and sadness stayed with her. That story was absolutely terrifying. But wait till you hear this one. Late one night, a man was listening to music while his wife and infant daughter slept. When he heard a sudden thumping and thought it must be his cat. He went to sleep in a spare bed to not disturb his wife, but he was almost immediately awoken by the same thumping noise. So he got up to check things out, but he still wasn't able to find his cat. When he looked out of the kitchen window, that's when he saw two people standing outside. At this time, it was around two in the morning and he thought it must be his neighbors getting high. He was annoyed and assuming they were making the noise that might wake up his family, he went back to his daughter's room to check on her. All of a sudden, he was completely overcome by a creepy feeling. The thumping had followed him from the kitchen to the bedroom, and he was now hearing it on both windows at the same time. He then went back to the door to confront the people outside, but instead of finding men, 
he saw two young boys. They were 10 or 11 years old. And that creepy feeling now became overwhelming dread. And the air was heavy with a stench of mold. The man started feeling like he might throw up from the disgusting smell that filled the air. And that's when the shorter boy said, May we use your telegraph? Before he could answer, the man saw that both boys had completely black eyes. They were expressionless and very disturbing. The boy asked to use his telegraph again. And that's when the man realized that it was completely silent all around him. There was no noise from crickets or cars. It was literally dead silent outside. The man told them that he didn't have that service because what the fuck? This is not the fucking 1800s here. And he watched as their expressionless faces turned into rage. And he was like, oh shit. And slammed the door shut and locked it. He then ran into his daughter's room, suddenly afraid for her life to make sure she was safe and breathing. And that's when the thumping on all the windows started again. The man then got his daughter and held her and got down on the ground beneath the windows. He was sobbing at this point and scared out of his mind. He ended up laying on the floor for hours, crying and shaking uncontrollably, listening to this horrible thumping sound. When his wife's alarm went off, though, the thumping stopped. He then took his daughter into his bedroom, and his wife was startled by his appearance. And she asked him what was wrong. He said he had had a bad dream and handed his daughter to her. The man then made his wife coffee like he did every day, and then turned on every light in the house. And when she left for work, he walked her outside with their daughter and he asked her to stay in the driveway until he got back inside. And while he stayed in the house waiting for his wife to come home, he was panicking all day long. But luckily, once his wife got back home, they decided to take a family drive to their brother's house for the weekend in order to get away to whatever he had experienced the night before. Damn, that is some creepy shit. The thumping is very interesting, and I'm assuming that's knocking he heard. The thumping was them, like, I don't know, maybe they're able to make a knocking sound without actually knocking on anything. I don't know. That's very weird. But whatever he saw that night absolutely scared the shit out of him. But what's interesting is that many stories about black-eyed children often happen around Halloween. In fact, an engineer in North Texas had a terrifying encounter with the black-eyed children one Halloween night. And apparently this woman or engineer was a self-described skeptic and had never experienced anything paranormal before. Now, not many kids had come to the door that night for trick-or-treating, which was unusual. Around 9.30 that night, her and her husband were watching TV. They had turned the porch light off and let their dog out of her crate. Their dog was friendly and calm, but loved to greet visitors at the door. So they opted to crate her during trick-or-treat time. Their teenage son, who also lived with them, was out with friends for the evening. At 10 o'clock, her husband went upstairs to get ready for bed. She was alone with her dog at her feet when she heard a light knocking at the door. She was immediately on edge. They had a doorbell that lit up at night, so there was no reason for somebody to be knocking instead. Someone at the door would be able to see her watching TV, so she felt she couldn't ignore it. The knocking came again. The woman then looked at her dog, expecting her to be heading toward the door to greet the visitor, but her dog was gone. She found her dog cowering near the back door, which was very unusual. Chloe, crate, the woman said, but the dog wouldn't move. She then called to her husband, but he couldn't hear her. The knock came again. She glanced out the window near the door and saw silhouettes of two children, which when she saw the two children, she was relieved because she assumed it was just harmless neighborhood kids out trick-or-treating. So she turned on the porch light, cracked the door, but didn't open it all the way to keep the dog from running out. What was weird is that these kids weren't wearing costumes or carrying any kind of bag for candy. And because of this, this made the woman feel very uneasy. It was an 11 or 12 year old girl and an eight or nine year old boy. And the girl said, ma'am, can we please come inside and use your phone to call our mom? And obviously this woman's never seen these children before and she's very weirded out by what they're doing there and why aren't they trick or treating So at this point, the woman obviously didn't trust the girl and she was becoming more scared as the seconds went by. Then the woman asked her if she had a cell phone. The two kids turned to look at each other and then they stared at each other but didn't speak. They then turned back and the girl said, ma'am, my cell phone battery doesn't have any charge left in it. Can we please come inside and call our mother? 
we're alone out here, my brother is scared. The woman knew that she should be letting these kids use her phone, but this growing sense of fear kept overtaking her. She told the girl she would call her mom for her, and at that point the kids looked at each other again, and the girl said, Ma'am, my little brother has to use your bathroom. Can we please come inside while you call our mom? And at that point she started moving toward the door. And when the girl stepped forward, the woman saw her totally black eyes for the first time. And that was when she was completely overcome with fear and completely terrified, so much so that she started to close the door. The girl said, please, ma'am, we're really scared and alone out here. We have to come inside. Please help us. And then both kids started crying at the exact same moment. The woman then slammed the door shut and locked it. And she told them that she'd call their mother if they have the number, but they couldn't come inside the house. The kids then just stood on the porch still, staring at her with their black eyes, but eventually they walked away. The woman ended up finding her dog hiding under the bed in the guest room, completely scared stiff. Another Halloween story talks about how a few days before Halloween, a man noticed that his neighbor hadn't decorated his house. He usually went all out and had one of the most decorated homes in the neighborhood. He explained that he wasn't passing out candy this year because of something that had happened the year before. The neighbor said last year his brother's kids had come over to trick or treat. They had a great night and left around 10.30. A few older kids had come by after that and he called it a night around 11.30 p.m. While he was sitting in his living room watching TV, somebody rang the doorbell. It was just past midnight, but he had left his Halloween lights on. He thought it must be late night trick or treaters, so he thought, hey, let's have some fun. So he opened the door and started to yell, boo. But before he did, he was met with an immediate feeling of regret. Two teenage boys were on his porch, one around 13 or 14 years old. The other was around 16 or 17, and they stared at him. At first, he thought their pupils were just completely dilated, but then he saw that their eyes were all black. The younger teen told him that they were lost and asked to come inside and use his phone. The man now was completely terrified and convinced these kids were dangerous. He said no multiple times and then shut the door. The older kid then said, can we just wait in your house until our parents come get us? He repeated no and made sure the door was locked. After that, he ended up staying awake until 5 a.m. afraid to go to sleep. He was convinced that these kids would try to break into his house. And when he finished the story, the neighbor told him about the black-eyed kids. He had never heard of them before, but he was convinced that this wasn't kids playing a prank. He said the fear he felt came from deep within him. It was uncontrollable and primal and seemed to come out of nowhere the second he saw the kids. That's absolutely terrifying. And I'm sure as you're noticing, a lot of these stories don't have conclusive endings to them. They kind of stop abruptly. So one night, days before Halloween, two young teens wandered a neighborhood, knocking on doors and asking to use the phone. A young man walking to the corner store watched them curiously. They noticed him watching and started walking toward him. The young man was instantly terrified. He ran the few blocks of the store and ducked inside. He told the cashier what had happened. The cashier said he knew about kids like that and he warned to never ever agree to what they're asking. Then the ominous teens appeared outside the store window. The cashier rushed to the door and locked it. They stood outside staring into the store with their disturbing black eyes for an hour. The cashier and the other man snuck out the back, but one of the teens appeared there. And at that point there was a struggle and the cashier was fighting the teen off. The young man ended up sprinting the three blocks home. He didn't know where the cashier went, but the black-eyed teens followed him. When he got home, he locked the door, shut the shades, and blasted music. The man tried to get in touch with the cashier, but he called his boss and quit, claiming he was moving away. The man never shook the fear, and he often feels like he's being watched by these black-eyed teens, even from blocks away. And there's even some accounts of people seeing adults with the same black eyes as the children. In one story, a security guard was riding the bus home after his shift, and it was around one in the morning. A man who looked to be in his mid-twenties got onto the bus and sat across from him. He had a briefcase and a cigar in his mouth, and obviously he wasn't allowed to smoke on the bus, so he just chewed on the end. The man with the cigar turned his head away from the window and looked directly at the security guard. At that moment, he saw that the man's eyes were completely black. And as he looked at the man in his black eyes, his heart started racing and he felt his stomach drop. He was panicking and he didn't understand why. Chewing the cigar, the man smiled wide, showing his brown teeth. The security guard 
stifled a scream, and he forced himself to stand up and move to the seat closest to the bus driver in order to calm himself down. He told himself later that the man was just wearing contacts, but he couldn't explain his sudden and intense reaction of sheer terror. One witness reported seeing a beautiful young woman with black eyes stepping out of the woods in the middle of the night while walking his dog, and his dog was instantly paralyzed in fear and couldn't move. The man then heard a strange high-pitched humming sound, which made him want to run away from her, but he felt as paralyzed as his dog did, and he was utterly helpless to her gaze. She asked, do you live nearby? And the man started to say no. But she continued, did you drive here? Meanwhile, the man is starting to back away from this woman. She then proceeded to say, I'm going to need to come with you. You'll let me come with you. That's okay, right? It's okay. Don't be afraid. Clearly afraid, the man's dog suddenly took off running and he ran after her. He called his roommate to come meet him and he vowed to never walk his dog again at night. At least one person out there is reported feeling as if the black eyed children were trying to rip out their soul and invade their body. Another said he felt a cold tightness grip his chest and had a visceral experience all over his body. Another person saw black eyed elderly people wandering down a dark road. When a young woman got home to her apartment one night, two black-eyed children were on her balcony on the third floor, and one of them said, Hey, miss, can you let us in? She was stunned and asked how they got there. And when she spoke, they got excited and moved toward the door, asking in to be let inside. The woman was terrified and called the police. One of the boys kept asking her to let them in, but when the police arrived, the boys were not on the balcony. They were running away through the parking lot. The police were confused and told her there was no way they could get down from that balcony without help. But that's where that story ends. And that's how many of these stories ends. There's no conclusive ending and obviously there's no way to source the information in these stories. Obviously these are people's first-hand accounts with black-eyed children, black-eyed adults, black-eyed elderly people. I mean, the black-eyed humans are just everywhere it seems. But obviously... There's a lot of themes throughout these stories, the unfamiliar knocks, unexplainable fear that takes over people when they actually look into the eyes of these black eyed beings, as well as all of the unusual requests like let me in, let me use your phone. It it seems like there's a lot of similarities among the stories. And I also find it interesting how, you know, in all these stories, all of the, you know, the people's pets like experience some type of, I don't know if energy is the right word for it, but some type of presence that you know just terrified them and it's interesting how paranormal activity of these black-eyed children can cause that state of fear and panic like almost telepathically it's just really interesting yeah it's 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 weird that they almost kind of like emanate this sort of omen or darkness about them that you know causes this fear of dread and just fearfulness that people experience with black-eyed children but at the end of the day The black-eyed children remain one of the world's most fascinating mysteries, and it seems like their primary goal or mission is to get inside somewhere. They want to get inside your car, your house, your business, and it oftentimes seems like they lurk on dark country roads waiting for passing vehicles to slow down or stop, or they just show up at your house and they knock on doors or tap on your windows. But what's very interesting about them is they almost always ask for permission before trying to enter. And if consent isn't granted, they can't go in. Now this is very interesting because in traditional vampire lore, it's said that vampires won't enter a home unless they're invited. And this is also true for demons, if you believe in demons. Some type of invitation must be extended first. So many people believe that black-eyed children are demons who have taken on a childlike form in order to appear less menacing. It's believed by some that demons will always be just short of realism when taking on other forms, which is why the children have black eyes. Occasionally, people have even reported seeing talons on the black-eyed children or cloven hooves like a demon. But what's so interesting is that when you refuse to let them in, they just disappear. That is not always the case with demons. One theory is that the children don't even really want inside, but their primary objective is is to scare people. And this fear creates energy. 
And that is what the black eyed children feed on. Some even believe that children aren't taking on another form at all, but instead they're an alien hybrid creature and the black eyes are just a trait of their alien half. Many people think that the objective of alien abductions, and we've talked about this before in previous episodes, is for the aliens to study human reproduction and their goal is to create a half human, half alien hybrid. Depictions of aliens by those who have claimed to have been abducted do oftentimes include jet black eyes. The gray specifically, not really like necessarily jet black, like bottomless pits, but definitely have big black eyes. So maybe, you know, if you cross a a human with a, a gray alien, maybe you get a black eyed child. What's also interesting is that when black eyed children visit people's homes, they oftentimes want to come inside and use the phone. So maybe they're alien hybrids who have been abandoned here on earth and they are trying to call home just like ET own home. ET phone home. <laughs> I like that theory. You know, out of the theories, I like to believe that black eyed children are alien hybrids and they're not really evil. They're just lost here on earth trying to figure out how to get home. <laughs> just like ET. <laughs> I'm with you. And I found it really interesting how in one of these you know, stories you just covered was how when they were in the presence of the black eyed children, it was like their surroundings, you know, completely like the noises of, you know, the nighttime crickets and stuff like that just completely got, you know, ceased basically yeah. was exactly what happened with Thomas Reed and what we just covered. Yeah, that's know? exactly so, right. It's that's a great point to bring up is like there is a lot of similarities, I feel like, with alien abduction and just alien encounters and ufo encounters with black eyed children because i don't know if necessarily the black eyed children are really evil and they're really like an omen and they're emanating this evil like darkness off of them and that's what people are getting scared of i think it could just be people are scared because they look fucking scary because they got black eyes and that's it that's all there is to it is they just look creepy so therefore people get scared because think about it i mean you would be scared if you if you heard knocking on your front door and you went there and there was a little fucking alien standing on yeah. your doorstep. You'd be freaked out too. You'd probably get fearful. Your dog would probably get scared. It'd be the same type of experience, I feel like. You know, uh, unless you're weird like me and you're like, hey, come on in. <laughs> Most people would be like, hell to the no. I don't know what you are or where you came from or, you know. So I, I, think, I think this idea that black-eyed children are alien hybrids is a very interesting one and honestly probably one of the most believable ones because i mean let's talk about demons for a second it first of all not everybody believes in demons because in order to believe in demons you have to believe in some level of spirituality whether you know that's catholicism or christianity i mean there's some level of of religious belief there so if you don't believe in religion at all then you're going to probably discount that there's some type of demonic entity but at the same time i do understand why a lot of people do believe that these black eyed children are demonic entities because they definitely do share a lot of common characteristics with, you know, what a demon might do. And, you know, they want to come in because they want to either possess your home, your, your vehicle, or they want to ultimately possess you. But at the same time, I'm like, I feel like most demons don't need that permission. You know, they don't, they, they definitely need to like sometimes they're conjured right you can conjure demon ouija board you can bring in evil spirits i mean there's a lot of ways to conjure demons but at the same time there's some demons that just are gonna you know inhabit you know a place or a person for whatever reason and i feel like why isn't it that in a lot of these haunting stories do we not see or really hear about black eyed children Right, if that's right. what they are, if it's demonic entities, then why aren't they, you know, in so many more haunting stories? Because I feel like most, if, if demons are real and they are able to possess or, you know, haunt a particular place, oftentimes I don't feel like they're powerful enough to do a full blown human apparition that looks almost real minus the eyes. That just seems very unlikely to me. This theory is very interesting to me because I love learning about space and I love learning about dimensions and parallel universes and all of that. And from what I have learned about it is 
that it is very, very possible that there are other dimensions where there is life that exists that lives in these other dimensions. And these dimensions essentially bleed over into each other. So we live in this dimension, but then there's 12 other dimensions or 10 Mm -hmm. other dimensions that are all kind of running in parallel with each other in some way, shape or form. And it's very possible that at some points in time, or there could be a way to actually open up a portal or something like that to allow an interdimensional being to come into this dimension. And maybe they do take on a form of a child because, you know, they, it's just a way to sort of catch people off guard because maybe they do feed off of fear or energy. I mean, we don't know. Cause like, I mean, we don't know if interdimensional beings exist at all, but it's possible that, they do and if they do exist then maybe this is one way that they do it is that they take the form of a child and they go around terrorizing people in order to feed off of that fear and maybe the ultimate goal is to harness the energy of somebody's soul if they can get in but what's weird is like in all these stories almost people denied them access you know like so many people i'm like wow so many people were actually smart and turn them away and shut the door in their face. And like, we didn't really have any stories of people that went down like this road with a black eyed child and let them use their phone and like had them spend the (laughs) night at their house. Like where's those stories at? And it's very weird to me, you know, like when you look at it as a whole, it's very weird to me that they all kind of end abruptly with these children vanishing and then that's it. They see them and they're gone. So it's, it's very weird to me. Yeah, because I feel like if they were paranormal activity, they wouldn't have just came around once, you know? I feel like they would have been trying over and over, like days on end, to get into somebody's house and completely like harass them, like continuing to knock all over their house and stand at whatever door and, you know, continuing to terrify them. So none of these stories had that like consistency of like they're continuing to come to them and stuff like that. Because like I just feel like a demon is not going to give up that easily. Right, right. Why would a demon go through all this trouble to, you know, try to possess somebody or haunt somebody? And if you shut the door in their face, they'll eventually go away or disappear. Or like, if you just say no to them, they go by. Uh, That doesn't really make sense to me. Plus, why, why is there no examples of people like instantly starting to like, you know, do the Lord's prayer when they see one of these, you know, like that, that's my thing is like, there's not enough. I don't feel like there's enough connections there to say that this is a demonic entity that people are experiencing. And I understand that a lot of religious folks out there that, you know, believe in black eyed children believe that they are some type of demonic spirit. I mean, some go even as far to say they're literally like spawns of Satan himself. And they're like, basically offspring of fallen angels. So like basically minions of the devil Mm -hmm. and they just run around and chill, you know, a childlike form in order to trick us and deceive us so that we will let them in. And then they just, you know, feed off of us essentially. But I just feel like if that were the case, why aren't there like fucking possession stories of humans that have that let black eyed children in their house and then they're overtaken. And, you know, we have a, full blown exorcism being performed because a black eyed child stayed the night. (laughs) Like why, why don't you see that? And I just don't see that out there. It just seems like to me that it's even possible that this is just all folklore. Like this is like one of those urban legends. Cause yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, of, of things out there that I think people want to believe is real, but at the end of the day, it's just a good story, you know, Mm -hmm. like, Oh, there's these creepy children with black eyes that run around and, scare people essentially is all they do, you know, because even when I see in paranormal investigators talking about it, they even seem like, well, (laughs) it's a little, it's a little questionable. And I think most paranormal investigators would probably just laugh honestly and be like, it's not real. I've never seen any evidence for this whatsoever. You know, people's accounts of things is not evidence that, I mean, it's not concrete proof that something exists. Is it worth considering? Sure. But it's not, something you can prove an idea off of, you know? So I don't know. I don't know. It's one of those things that I I think is very interesting. It's definitely very creepy and I understand why because fucking black eyed anything is fucking scary. So I get 
why people are so obsessed with this this topic and hopefully you guys found this episode interesting and creepy and spooky uh it definitely some of the stories were uh definitely bone chilling so with that being said we will go ahead and wrap up today's episode there if you enjoyed this episode of the lights out podcast let us know subscribe on youtube itunes spotify really appreciate it leave us a rating or review and we will be back next week with another crazy episode for you so until next time lights out everybody <laughs>